Tutti Tutti. How are you loves? Welcome to Dining with the Diva. How are you today? It's minestrone soup day. Zuppa di minestrone. We're doing that today, sweethearts. How are you all? It's a gorgeous day. So if you're not in here with me and you're outside, it's great. As long as you're out walking and keeping a six foot distance. Hi, Jody. How are you, love? We're making minestrone soup today. I thought that would be fun since I have all of the ingredients and I'm out of quite a few things because my um, order to Aldi has been about three or four days. <laughs> so I'm out of a few things. That's okay. Um, but I have all the ingredients to make a delicious minestrone soup, sweet peas. So that's what I'm going to do today for you. Make a beautiful minestrone vegetable soup. And I love to put different things in my minestrone. I like to put in white beans, the, the cannellini beans. I also put pasta in it. Usually I, this is a little bit big. Usually I like to use the little pastine or the ditalini, the little ones. But what I do is I don't put it in at the end. I cook it up first al dente in some salted water, drain it, rinse it, and then put a little oil on it so it doesn't get sticky. And then what I do when I serve each individual portion, I put it in the, I'm sorry, I'm turning this on so I can get it going. I put it in each individual bowl so it has that al dente because if you put it in with the soup, it starts to get very thick, especially if it's sitting for a couple days and it almost turns into a, just a pasta stew. So I like to keep the pasta separate, covered in plastic, put it in a plastic um, you know, gallon cont uh, you know, bag or container, keep a little oil on it to keep it moist, and then I put it in each time I serve the soup. So it's really lovely and al dente. Hi, Jackie, how are you, sweetheart? Welcome today. We're heating up our bowl here, sweethearts, our fabulous Lake Crusade, I should say. And we're gonna start with some olive oil. And I have cut up some red onion, some beautiful carrots and celery. I like my carrots and celery quite chunky in a soup since it tends to cook long. So there's some nice big chunks of that. I like to put a little bit of potato in to thicken it. I have some chicken broth here, chicken stock I have. Also, I'm heating this up, I'm gonna saute the red onion I have, or you can use white onion, yellow onion, in a bit of olive oil. I am just going through the olive oil with my shows. <laughs> I need a boatload of olive oil. So I'm gonna put that in, sweethearts, and then start my red onion. Hold on with me, I need, I need my wooden spoon. So we're just gonna start the minestrone, sweethearts. I'm gonna put in a little bit of red onion, saute that down. I also like to use a little bit of garlic Unfortunately, I don't have any garlic right now, so I'm just gonna use the beautiful red onion, and we're gonna saute all of this down and start our beautiful minestrone. Hi, taking a break from yard work. Hi, sweetheart. Oh, yes, mom and I are well. Thanks, sweetheart. Hi, Maestro Gregory. Thanks for joining us today. It's a very lovely and not too heavy minestrone soup day. I thought that that would be fun to do, a little bit lighter, it's a gorgeous day. It's about 70 some out there right now. It's fabulous. But this soup is lovely. And I'm going to put in some gorgeous tomatoes, uh, canned tomatoes that I have that are whole that I crush in at the end. And then I have some beautiful beans. But this is great with a lot of different things. And I also have a package of frozen vegetables. I have the frozen peas and carrots and corn. I'm gonna throw those in too, sweethearts. So it'll be really vegetable-y, it'll be lovely. It'll be very tasty. Hi, Kim. How are you, sweetheart? Hi, Kim Stalker. Thanks for joining us, love. Sorry, I'm just looking around for more oil. I'll be right there. I'm ha. Here we are. Here we go, lovies. One of my favorite soups. Oh, I know. Isn't it the best? I just love it. It's a lovely soup. As I was saying, I've already made the pasta for it. I have macaroni. I usually like to use uh, pastine or didalini, the smaller ones, but didn't have that, so I'm using up my mac. I like to boil it in salted water and rinse it. When it's al dente, rinse it. Cold water, put some olive oil over it, and I keep this on the side separately when I serve the soup. I don't like to cook it in the soup. It tends to make it very much too thick and viscous. So, viscous, did you hear that word, Mom? Yay! Mama Lamberti's here. I used viscous. <laughs> and it wasn't even on her list. <laughs> are we laughing? Yes, we are. So I'm gonna get this lovely red onion sauteed in this oil. Then I'm going to put in my carrot and my celery and my stock and my potatoes. It's going to be lovely. It's going to be fantastic. So I'll show you how to make this soup, guys. It's really delicious. Delicious soup. How is everybody today? It's so gorgeous out. 
I'm so happy. I already got my 11,000 steps in. I did it this morning. Fabuloso. So it was good to get some vitamin D. Fabuloso. It was great. Beautiful day out there. All the trees are in bloom. It's fabulous. Hi, Cheryl. How are you, love? Thanks for joining us today. We're making the minestrone. So I'm just sauteing some red onion in some olive oil right now, loveys. I'm going to make that nice and translucent. Then I'm going to saute my carrots and celery, put in my potatoes, add my chicken stock, and then add my beautiful crushed tomatoes to it, add some white beans, and then add some of my, a bag of my frozen vegetables that I have too. You can put anything in this soup. Um, what's great? When you get your television show, your mother has to be there too. Well, of course. <laughs> Mom, see, Mama Lambertri has to be sort of in the background, then she'll come on for guest appearances. Is that right? It's beautiful in Michigan too. Oh, really? Jody, it's a chance of snow? Oh gosh, oh, wow. No. Well, of course. It's a miracle it hasn't snowed. Sometimes it snowed here in April, but yeah, yeah. not this time, not this time. Yes, so we're just sauteing this down. It looks beautiful. Want to add a little garlic? I wish I had some. I, let, I do like a little garlic in minestrone. It's delicious. You can also put in spinach at the end if you want to put in kale at the end. Some greens is lovely to do. Zucchini. You have zucchini in the summer. Hi, Kim. How are you, sweetheart? Thanks for joining us. We're making our minestrone soup. And the key to the great minestrone, loves, as you know, we go to is go. my Alta Cucina tomatoes. Thank now, you. I know they're not in the stores. But there is a similar tomato uh, in the store. I can't remember the name of it. <laughs> it is, I think they have it at Whole Foods. And it's a California tomato as well, because these are the California tomatoes. Hi, Bettina. Hi, Giuseppe. Ciao. Hi, are you, loveys? Okay, loveys, I'm going to turn this down to low, because now my onions are tending to brown a little too quickly, because I'm talking my mouth off. So here we go. Putting in our celery and our carrot. Boom. That'll slow down the cooking. Here we are. We're gonna get that all beautifully sauteed. I like to saute the veggies up a, get, a bit to caramelize them, get the flavor out of them. Love to do that. Then we're gonna put the stock in. It's gonna be fantastic. So I'm gonna put just a little more oil because why not? It's good for your skin. See my skin? A lot of oil. <laughs> a lot of oil. <laughs> oh, good God, I make myself laugh. We have to. Really? That's it. You have to laugh. That's it, sweethearts. So we're just going to brown these beautiful veggies. I'll turn it back up to medium. Get these cooking. I love big chunks of carrot and celery. I love it. It's fantastic. It gives some texture to the soup. And then I'm going to hand squeeze these. I'm just going to take them right from the can. Well, this is a huge can, love. So this is, you know, the big mama can. It's six pounds. <laughs> it's six ounces. It's huge. Hi, Annie Lynn. How are you, loves? Making our minestrone, it's gluten-free, as long as you don't put in the pasta, which I don't. I put it separately for each person, because I actually don't like pasta in the soup. I like it with the beans, but some people like pasta, and what you finish it with is a ton of Parmesan shaved on top. And I don't have my big one down up here right now. You know, the big one I bought, they're all downstairs in the fridge, in the basement. And then I have to, you know, Basically, get a get get you know weightlifter to bring up the cheese because that's how much we have. But I do have some Grana Padano in this fridge that I can use, loveys. So we're just sauteing this up. I'm gonna salt and pepper it. What you can put in this soup um, is some bay leaf, which is lovely. If you have some um, oregano, if you have some fresh thyme, even dried thyme, Italian seasoning, it's lovely to put some of that in. A lot of fresh cracked black pepper is lovely in it as well so we're just going to get that all sauteed down get a little <coughs> sorry the black pepper got me get a little bit of color on there i'm going to get a little bit of thyme in here i have dried thyme hi lauren how are you lovey how are you nice to see you sweetheart so to release the oils just rub it between your fingers you'll smell it it's beautiful fresh dried thyme it's lovely in this soup. Also, I think I have some bay leaves. I don't, I can't, I don't use fresh bay leaves. If I could get them, it would be lovely. But I have some lovely couple of bay leaves in here. Just be careful when you fish them out because they're not fun to eat. Hi, sweetheart. Thanks for joining us today. So a couple bay leaves in here, bigger ones, really gives a beautiful savory flavor to the soup. 
So there we are, lovies, getting that all caramelized down. I love to caramelize the vegetables in soup. I don't like just to throw them in and boil them. I like them to have color and taste on them and some flavor. So we're just browning all that up, lovies. Ooh, it smells great. And then I'm gonna put my potatoes in. I have a couple of small potatoes that I actually just peeled and diced. It's lovely in the soup, it thickens it up. It's fantastic. So we're gonna do that. It's best if it does cook for at least, you know, 30, 40 minutes, I find. And it's also better the next day because the flavors all come together and meld together. That's it, and they taste lovely. But it's a lovely soup with a nice homemade bread. And you're all making bread now, guys. I see all of you making bread. I'm not, but you are. <laughs> I should make a bread. I have so much yeast. But I am going to make, remember I showed you that kachapuri, that Georgian cheese bread? Oh, boy. And as soon as I get my cheese, I'm going to make it. And you're going to flip out. Yeah, it's going to be fabuloso. So we're going to have this for dinner tonight. Actually, I'm having some fish. A la thank you, Cheryl Burkle, yeah. who dropped off some wild caught flounder that was frozen. And I'm going to have some tonight with some nice potatoes and sauteed spinach and maybe some zuppa. And that would be lovely. So we're getting all this caramelized love. It's lovely. It smells fantastic. And then I'm going to add some of this chicken broth. It's a low sodium one that I just happen to have. So I like to use probably the entire container of chicken stock I'm going to use. And then you could probably use two or at least one and a half. And then I'm also going to add the crushed tomatoes. Thank you. And thank you, Mama. And some of the tomato, the juice of the tomatoes as well to, uh, to color it with that beautiful red color. So now we're just gonna cook this down, lovies, for a bit. It's gonna be fantastic. I love soup. Love it. What's your favorite soup, guys? What do you love? I know people love minestrone. I love mushroom soup. Mm -hmm. um, I love, I love, woo, Italian wedding soup. I love Italian wedding soup. I actually made it homemade once, Italian wedding soup, and I made the meatballs. They're off the chain. Hi, Arthur, how are you, sweetheart? Thanks for joining us today. We're making our minestrone soup today. It's fabulous. I'm gonna put it on high just to start it to heat up. And um, yes, so what kind of soups do you like, sweethearts? I know I love Italian wedding soup. I love minestrone. I love brothy soups. I love turkey soup, chicken soup. Um, I don't, do you remember, do you remember Seinfeld, guys? You know Seinfeld. Do you remember the soup Nazi? Well, there's the actual soup places in um, New York and I've never been. So once we stop by, and it's different now, he sold it to a company, but they still make the soups. Well, I had, I think, a lobster bisque that sent me down. It was fabulous. Chicken soup's your favorite. Hi, Olivia. Hi, sweetheart. How are you? Okay. Oh, potato leek. Oh, yeah, Cheryl Burkle. That's delicious. Annie Lynn, mushroom and tomato. Yes. Love mushroom. Love tomato. I make a great tomato soup just with these tomatoes. I can't say enough about them. If you know anybody, a chef, anyone who can get into Restaurant Depot, Get these, because these will change your life, I'm telling you. These are the tomatoes. You just can't believe how wonderful they are. Um, they're just the best. Fantastic, fantastic. So what I like to do, hi, Matthew. How are you, sweetheart? Welcome. We're making our minestrone today, our beautiful minestrone. Um, so I'm glad to know your favorite soups. I know my friend Kelly makes a fabulous potato leek. I don't know if I've, I love leeks. I don't know if I've ever made one myself. I know I make the Italian wedding, and when you can make it yourself with you make your own meatballs, woo, they're fabulous. And you put a little of the pastina in. Hi, Deanne, how are you? Thanks for joining me, sweetheart. Um, yes, fabulous. I'm so glad you're with me all today, lovey. So what I'm gonna do now, I've washed my hands, they're very washed. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Karsten, happy birthday to Karsten. I know it's Karsten's birthday today in Denmark. Yes, okay, I'm gonna say it in Danish. I remember it. I think that's right. Did I do it right, Lisa? That's happy birthday. We'll see if I got it. <laughs> and that's all they wrote, folks. Um, oh, BJ's has Cooper Sharp. Oh, hi, oh. Dr. Lars. Okay, Lynn said BJ's has Cooper Sharp. Get on that, Annie Lynn. Make some of your gluten-free mac and cheese. Yes. Hi, Mr. and Mrs. Lake. Hi, Carl and Pete. How are you, lovies? We're making our minestrone today. It is fabulous. So I'm just going to put in some of the tomatoes. I'm crushing them in my hands and because it, it's so much fun. It's like almost like you're crushing grapes with your feet, but it's tomatoes with your hands. It's great fun. I know it's messy and I have, you know, I have freaking 
Look at my sleeves today. Who I am, Elvira, Mistress of the Night sleeves today? <laughs> my mom's over there laughing. <laughs> Dr. Lars says my happy birthday in Danish was correct. To Nugamithus to stay. Yes, that's all I can say, so I have to say it over and over again. <laughs> that's all they wrote, folks, for the Danish. Because that's a tricky language. You think other languages are hard. No, no, no. <laughs> so I'm putting in my beautiful tomatoes here, just crushing them. It's wonderful. It's very therapeutic, crushing them between your hands. It's lovely. It's a lovely feeling. Afterwards, you, when you've seen that they've been squeezed all out, oh, all over the kitchen, like literally they just go flying. I see tomato juice all over here. So it's all right. I'll clean it up. Oh, thank you, Lisa. Happy birthday, Karsten. Have a beautiful day. We'll celebrate when we get there. Pray, I hope. Oh, God, please. <laughs> Make a beautiful cake. Okay, sweetheart. So I'm just putting my tomatoes in. I like to crush them by hand and then put a little bit. Oh, God, I'm a mess. <laughs> Hold on, loves. Just have to rinse the hands since I don't have a... Hello, Kathleen. How are you, sweetheart? Look at that, lovies. Tomatoes are in. Gorgeous. And I like to put a little bit of the tomato, a little bit of the juice. Boom, boom. It thickens it up. It's lovely. Here we go, loves. Look at that. Woo! Yes. You got it, loves. Yes, Dr. Lars is practicing. My mom has this really cool old barn that came with the house, of course. <laughs> and my dream is to redo the barn when I hit the lotto or hit 3 million viewers or get a TV show. <laughs> then I can redo the barn. Um, so it's a really fun, rustic barn. Love it. We've set up a little makeshift gym in there. Lars fashioned an Olympic bar literally out of an old pipe. It's hilarious. It's fabulous. Talk about old school. It's like an old Rocky 70s gym. Yeah. So now we have the tomatoes in, sweet peas. And what I'm going to put in now are the can of white, the cannellini beans that I've rinsed. So I'm going to put those in. That'll thicken it up. You could also put two cans in. You know, you could definitely get away with two cans of beans in this. Also, I've seen in this is kidney beans if you want to put them in. Garbanzo beans if you want to put those in. A um, whole bunch of lovely beans that you can do. What else, Mama? Your veggies. Oh, veggies. Yes, thanks, Mama. Sure. I need your recipe for this soup. Sure, sweetheart. It's just, it's I know. Just, I never write anything down. It just piles in. I just put anything, I call it anything that's in the fridge, minestrone, <laughs> what's happening. So mom's getting the, um, the beautiful um, frozen veg out. Frozen veg, is, uh, veg are great to have in the freezer. All, you know, what's greater, peas are great, carrots. When you have that combination, put it in, it makes the soups really lovely. Thanks mama, see it's a mixed vegetable bag. Here it is. And it's just green beans, corn, peas, and carrots. So we already have carrots in it, but you can always have more. So I'm just gonna put the whole bag in. It's lovely, it's a good, you know, few ounces. It gives color to the soup, some texture, some new vegetables, especially if you're cooking this when all the vegetables aren't in season. Hi, Valentin, how are you? Thanks for coming in today. Hi, Janet, how are you, love? Welcome to Dining with the Diva with our beautiful minestrone soup. It's just gorgeous. Now this has to cook down, loveys. I have it on high. I may turn it up to boil to 450 because there's a lot of liquid in this soup. So I like to cook this down. And then, as I said, if it's a little thick, if it starts to thicken up and you want it thinner, add a little more stock if you'd like or water just to thin it out. Hi, Gianluca. How are you, sweetheart? Welcome. We're making our minestrone, zuppa di minestrone today. It's beautiful. We have our beautiful white beans and potatoes in there and celery and carrot and onion on our beautiful bag of veggies and our beautiful tomatoes and some thyme and salt and pepper. I have some pasta, I have macaroni. I usually I like to use the beautiful didalini or the little, the really tiny ones. But since I don't have them, I made the macaroni separate. It's al dente and then I, what I do is when I serve this, I put it in the bottom of the bowl, ladle this over the bowl and then it warms it up. But then it's not, it's not as, um, if I put this all in, first of all, it's gonna turn into a sludge. <laughs> A slug. I mean, I love pasta, but it tends to then really thicken everything up and it's going to be into a stew. So I like to keep it a bit soupy. So we're just going to cook this, lovies. I'm going to try the seasoning. Could you give me a spoon, mama? Of course. And then at the end, I like to serve it with the macaroni and a big dusting of, thank you, mama, Parmigiano or Reggiano or the, the Grana Padano or Pecorino, whatever you like. I'm just going to try it, sweetheart. Mmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, thank you, sweetheart. Yes, 
Oh yes, Mrs. Cahora, I will send you the recipe. I will put it on. What does it need, Mama? Oh, let me get another spoon. Mom's getting another spoon. You know, we've got a social distance spoon. Social distance spoons. spoons. <laughs> you know. We've only been in the house together for four weeks, but that's it, you know. Hold on. Thank God we like each other, right? Thank God we like each other. Depends on the day, right? You know. <laughs> I'm sure some days are tricky. <laughs> What does it need, Mama? Mm. I know black I'm going to say black, black pepper, which I've already added seven cups of. You know, that's it. Sometimes at the end, I'll put, if it's if I want it a little sweeter, yeah. I, I don't put sugar in. I actually, my 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 big secret is I'll put a tablespoon of honey in yeah. in a tomato sauce. Just a little bit of honey to sweeten it, and people don't often know, instead of instead of a lot of sugar. So I like to do that. How is it, Mama? We'll, we'll try it with black pepper. Yes. <laughs> and it'll also be good with the cheese That's in it. That is a new spoon. New spoons. Yeah. So but the cheese would be lovely. Well, the I cheese will be great. Plus, when it cooks down more and it really develops the flavors. Yeah. You know, I think just need more salt. Could have a little bit. Yeah. Not much. Not, Not much. much. Yeah. So a little bit of more salt, sweethearts. But I think it really will develop once it cooks it for a good. Time. A little more time. A little more time. Yeah. Well, that's those are. Yeah. What's great to put in at the end too, if you have fresh parsley. Oh yeah. It's lovely at the love, end. Yeah. Even a fresh basil, whatever you have, loves. It's it's lovely to put that in. Um, so that's very, very nice. Thanks, Thank Mama. So, and also I think the garlic helps too, if you have a little bit of garlic, which I didn't have, sweetheart. So here's the beautiful minestrone. It just has to cook. Just it just has, has to, to cook. cook. Yeah. It really it needs to, to cook, cook down yeah. quite a bit and then it'll taste fantastic. Um, thank you, sweetheart. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yes. I promise I'll post the recipe. I promise. <laughs> I know. I'm not, I know. I, I, there's some really great recipes online, but I will definitely post this exact one. I'll figure out the measurements. I'll say a half a can of six pounds of tomatoes. <laughs> no, I'll just say a couple of cans of whole tomatoes that you crush in your hands with the juice and chicken stock and some macaroni or whatever little pasta you have if you like that. Uh, your choice of beans. I use the cannellini. You can use kidney beans. You can use also what's great in here too that I didn't have today are mushrooms. Oh, yeah. But you know I love mushrooms. So, and, and zucchini is lovely in here. If you have some fresh zucchini from the garden in the summer, the little zucchini, you know, saute those up. They're lovely in this as well. I think fennel would be great in this as well. I love fennel, especially cooked fennel would be fantastic. Um, there's so many vegetables you can put in here. I think it would be just fantastic. So we're bringing this up, loves. I'm just gonna cook this probably for another half hour or so till it really comes together. Then I'm gonna show you a picture when it's all finished of what it looks like. I put the pasta in the bottom of the soup, then I ladle the soup, and then I finish it with a little drizzle of olive oil and some beautiful dusting of Parmigiano Reggiano, and it's just fantastic. Or a big, a big, huge chunk of Italian bread. Oh, yeah. Or sourdough bread, you know, toasted would be fabulous. The fresher, the better. I love fennel too, and I love the tops of the fennel. I love the fronds of the fennel. I'll often chop those up and put them in at the end too. I love that anisey taste that, that fennel has. It's fantastic. So fennel is great in here. Any type of vegetable, um, it would be great. Anything you love, put it in. I think it's fantastic. So here's our minestrone loves. Oh, I'm so happy. See how fast that soup is? It's so great, especially if you use you know, canned beans and you have your stock. Uh, it's great if you have homemade stock. If you make your stock homemade and you have chicken or veggie stock, go for it because it's, it's the best. It is. When I use soups with homemade stock, it's another level. But I didn't have homemade chicken stock. I had turkey, but I don't want to put turkey stock in this because then it'll flavor it with turkey instead of being more neutral, a tomato-based soup. So I would use a, a, um, a low-sodium chicken stock or veggie stock that's a little more neutral than turkey is going to be. Uh, toasted bread with the soup. Oh, yes. Or fat. what I wanted to make for you guys today, but I just didn't have the time because I was teaching right up to this. Um, I was going to make for you the fico, and I'll do it one day because I have so much cheese. <laughs> They're the little Parmesan crisps that you you basically use the um, you use this to grate the cheese, the microplane, and you it's right there next to me. <laughs> I have two of them, and you put it on a sill pat. You know, one of the baking sheets. I can almost taste it from here. Yes, it's fabulous, sweetheart. It's lovely, lovely, fresh, fresh soup. Um, and I grate Parmesan in little mounds and flatten it out and put it in, and you bake it for maybe eight to 10 minutes and they turn into these crisp, delicious keto, no flour in it, discs. And you can eat them with the soup. They're delicious as a little bit of an appetizer. I know the Barefoot Contessa who I love, she has a great recipe for those. And then you just bake them and they're really crispy. You make them with the fresh Parmigiano Reggiano or with the Grana Padano. 
be fantastic with the soup. Or a grilled cheese with the soup. I have a boat. Here's the story. Here's the story. You want to hear a story? Is this cooks? As you know, my friend, dear friend Kelly Shea, who's the chef who belongs to Restaurant Depot, he got me my fabulous cheese. I'm blessed that I now have, I don't know, 10 pounds of Parmigiano Reggiano that I was able to get at uh, about eight something a pound, which is unheard of. Because you know in the stores, Parmigiano Reggiano can be up to 21 a pound. What temperature? Oh, what temperature for the soup, dear? Well, I have it on high right now. It's on high, so it's just coming together. You know, I started out on medium sauteing all the veg, and then once I have a little liquid in, I have it on high. Um, not that you want to come into a rolling boil, you don't. But just to simmer it for a good, you know, 45 minutes to an hour, I would say. Because um, you like the vegetables soft. You don't want them too crunchy. You just want everything very soft and lovely and unctuous, there's the word. So my mother likes picante provolone. Mama Lamberti loves that. Boar's head, she loves that. So when Kelly, my friend, was getting cheese, he said, oh, I found this and this. And I said, this is great. He found me, oh, the temperature for the cheese mounds. Oh, mm. I'll look it up. that's a good question. I, I'll have to check the Barefoot Contessa. I'll, I'll put the recipe on my Facebook page, sweetheart. It's probably, three, it's probably 300. If it's too high, they'll burn. So I'm guessing for fico, just look up the Parmesan crisps. Fico. Yeah. And thanks, Mama. And maybe 250 to 3. I'm just guessing it. If it's higher, they'll burn quickly. So you want them slow, at low and slow. Hi, Deborah. How are you, sweetheart? Thanks for joining us today. So the, the soup's boiling just a little bit. A little bit of a boil on here. So the cheese story. I have Grana Padano. I have Parmigiano Reggiano. I got my Cooper Sharp. Remember when I made the mac and cheese? Well, mom said, oh, if Kelly can find it, maybe he can get a little bit of picante provolone or provolone. I said, okay, Kel, can you get some provolone? Thinking we're gonna get a chunk of provolone, but I know it's Restaurant Depot, so the sizes are bigger. So when Kelly, he dropped it off a few days ago in a mask and gloves, we're all masked and gloved outside on the porch. He drops it, runs away, and we're like 25 feet away from each other in the cars. I'm on the porch, and I look to see behind me a provolone that's the size of, let me think, a small Fiat. It's like this big. There's not even, it's this big. And I said to myself, what, <laughs> what are we, a deli? What are we gonna do? I have so much provolone that if anyone wants some provolone, then I'm gonna put it on the porch. It's gonna be the porch of provolone because I don't know what to do with that much provolone. I mean, I like provolone, but I don't like it like I love, you know, par Parmigiano and Gran Padano. And, it's better for me melted, you know? So what am I gonna do? I'm not making cheese steaks here. So I don't know what we're gonna do with it. We're gonna have to figure out some provolone recipes because I have so much provolone that I, I don't even know what to tell you right now. It's literally this big. Praise the Lord, we have a, a refrigerator downstairs because it's now the refrigerator of cheese. It's just, you open it up and you're hit with cheese. You just can't believe it was cheese. So if you need some provolone for anything, hit me up. Text me and you'll have some provolone because this is unheard of. Yes. Preheat oven to 400. Oh, Ina, wow. Ina I'm says, incorrect. Ina says. Ina says preheat the oven to 400, so it's meant to go fast, high and fast. Let me see. 400 for the uh, Parmesan crisps, loves. But you have to use real Parmigiano Reggiano. Uh, I wouldn't use, you know, the dried stuff or things like that. It won't work. You have to use the one that has the high fat so it melts. Three to five minutes. Three to five minutes at 400. Three to five minutes at 500, 400. <laughs> Three to five minutes at 400. But I'll put the recipe on my Facebook page, okay, loves. Yeah. Hi, Leslie. Hi, loves. Welcome. My soup's getting very lovely right now. It's, I can tell it's softening up, coming together. We're going to have a beautiful lunch of this soup. I have a little bit of bread, not a ton. Um, so mm -hmm. it's going to be all fine. I have crackers, and I love crackers. It'll be and fabulous. Crostini. And crostini. I have a little crostini, a rosemary crostini that we can have with this. It'll be delicious. And a big sprinkle of cheese on there. So, amore mios, thank you so much for joining me today. I know it was a quick one. Um, so, tomorrow, I'm still figuring out. You'll have to open a pizza stand on your porch. Yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> I may actually try to make the cacciapuri Georgian cheese bread with the provolone. It calls for Monterey Jack and feta and um, mozzarella. But you know what? I think I'm gonna try it with the provolone when I make the cacciapuri. Okay. I'm gonna try a few different cheeses. So I'll see if it works, because it might. It might be perfect for it. 
So here we are, lovies. I'm going to turn the soup down a little bit now to medium because it's kind of on a boil now. It's lovely. Beautiful, beautiful soup. Beautiful. So I'm just going to put this pasta at the bottom. Boom. Yes. Yes, 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 Janet. Yes. Check out my Facebook page. I'll put this recipe for the soup and for the Parmesan crisps that um, Ina Garden has. Barefoot Contessa. She's fabulous. Oh, yeah. Make the soup, guys. It's lovely. It'll last you all week. It's fabulous. Ina puts provolone in her turkey sausage lasagna. Oh, oh there you go. that's fabulous. Well, good to know. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Well, then I'll, I'll have to make a lasagna with provolone. That's a good idea. Because often I just make it with, um, yeah. I actually don't use, I use Parmesan uh, and a little mozzarella on top. But the provolone would be great. So I'm going to have to look up some provolone recipes <laughs> real quick. <laughs> so, or make a lot of pizza, sweethearts. That's what I'm going to do. So there we are, loves, our beautiful minestrone today. Thank you so much for joining me today. It was very fun. Get out and walk if you can. And Get out in this beautiful sun and get your vitamin D. It'll be fantastic. And make the soup, loves. Make soup. It's great. It lasts all week. It's good for you. It has a lot of vitamin C. It's great. All these little fabulous tomatoes, lycopene, all the good stuff for you. So thanks for joining me, sweet peas. Uh, ci vediamo domani. I'll see you tomorrow with what? I don't know. Non lo so. If I get my grocery order, something, we'll, we'll figure it out. If not, I'm making, I don't know, a grilled cheese again. <laughs> We're making something. I'll figure it out. We're making a cake. Maybe we'll make a cake. We don't even have that, do we, Mama? You can't, no. make, lazy can't make that cake. I'm trying to figure it out, buggies. I'm getting down what I have. Maybe I'll make actually the Ina Garden uh, Parmesan crisps because that I do have. Oh, yeah, you're right. I'll make the crisps tomorrow, sweet peas. I'll make the Fico crisps to go with this. Make the crisps, so I'll show you how to do it. I'm going to have to do it first. I've never done it. And that I don't want to screw up because I can just see coming out with, you know, burned little crisps. So I'll make those tomorrow, sweethearts. So thanks for joining me. Ci vediamo domani. Grazie mille. And stay safe, stay put, stay cooking. And I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, have a wonderful day, loves. Ciao, ciao, ciao.